and I have a short message. It's basically a, a, a word of encouragement. Somebody say word of encouragement. We're not going to get heavy. We're not going to get deep. But this is just to remind us of the benefits that we have in the kingdom of God. This is so powerful what we're getting ready to share. Nothing that you haven't already heard. And uh, it, it's so basic, but sometimes we need to be reminded of the basis. Amen? And we're going to talk about the power of redemption. Hashtag redemption to relationship. Redemption to relationship. And, uh, and when I get ready to read this, I thought about as God, our Father, when he had given uh, the freedom to Adam and Eve and have established the boundaries and, and the perimeters and what they should do and what they should not do, uh, they was a free more agent as unto God. But when they fail or when they fall, if you will, uh, they, their eyes was opened up to something that was never intended. And so, but God had to do something for them because when their eyes was open, they found out that they were naked. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever experienced that before in whatever level? They experienced that they was naked and so what they did, they they hid themselves. And if you know anything about God and you know anything about the enemy, the enemy will always try to offset what God is doing. I cannot say it no better than what Pastor Steve, a minister here the other Sunday, concerning about how the enemy himself was suffering from rejection. And so he wanted to use that same strategy or that same uh, 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 downfall and put it on God's people because his problem wasn't with the people. His problem was with, the, with God uh, because God began to say, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So therefore, I believe Lucifer or Satan, he, Satan, he became jealous. Can you say that? He became jealous uh, because he's the only angel of his type. If you look at, if you read the word of God, the only angel of his type and one of his responsibility, man, was to make sound, you know, make sounds to God so that, so that the Father can be glorified. But in that, uh, well, you know the story, but let me go to this. So God, our Father, when he created man, and he created man in his image after his likeness, and Pastor C said there's 100% value on us, right? And so because man had, man had fallen, God had to come up with something. So what happened, it took, you know, that there was a sacrifice that was made that was of an animal, an animal of innocent blood. And if you think about the innocent blood, even Jesus himself, uh, the re one of the reasons why God got him up out of the grave because they, because they crucified an innocent man. They crucified our Savior and our Lord and he was innocent. Praise God. There's something about innocent. When um, Abel, uh, when Cain had slew Abel, amen, he, he slew him or he had taken his life and he took a man's and it was innocent blood and the innocent blood began to cry out from the ground. Am I telling the truth? Amen. It been, uh, shah. He began to cry out from the ground. How much more when Jesus was hanging on that cross he cried out and said it is finished dropped his head in the lock of his shoulder and he yielded his yielded his ghost unto the father amen and and so so the blood the power of redemption is all in the blood of jesus can you say it? it's in the blood of jesus you don't mind if i walk around a little bit do you amen so uh we're going to go to saint john the third chapter a very familiar passage of scripture we all should know this by heart. Amen. I learned this in Sunday school. And notice what it said. And this is the King James Version. It says, for God so loved the world. Wow. That he gave his only begotten son. God gave up something to gain something. That whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Touch your neighbor and say, that's you. You have everlasting life. 
Man, isn't that exciting? We have everlasting life. We don't have everlasting damnation. Amen. We don't function off of condemnation, but we function off of the redemption power of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because a price had to be paid for our, uh, for our uh, sins, right? The Bible is a book of redemption. It is that or nothing at all. It is a book of redemption. Can you say that? It is not merely a book of history or science or of anthrop anthropology. It is a book of salvation and deliverance for lost humankind. The problem wasn't with the goat. The problem wasn't with the animals. But the enemy had afflicted human, uh, the, 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 the human race, if you will. And so, and so um, the ideal in the word redemption is twofold. It is referred to a deliverance, and it is referred to the price paid for that deliverance, a ransom. Stick a pen in the word ransom. And it is referred to the price paid for that deliverance. I just read that. Okay, ransom. Okay, we are redeemed from the penalty of sin, from the power of Satan and evil by the price Jesus paid on the cross for us. We couldn't pay it because we wasn't worthy. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son because God loved his creation. There's a lot of negative things out there, but you need to know, I need to know, that God loved his creation, which is mankind. Doesn't matter what the condition is, God loved us. Amen. Hallelujah. No matter what you think about yourself or what other people say about you, God loved us. His thoughts will never change towards us. His love will never change towards us. And I love this scripture when it says, God says this, when he was prophesying through the man of God, he said, I know the thoughts that I have concerning you. They are the thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you that expected end. Praise God. Thank God for that. Amen. Amen. And we are redeemed to a new freedom from sin a new relationship to God and a new life of love by the appropriation of that atonement for our sins. The entire Bible, whether it is the Old Testament or New Testament, looks to the mighty, redempted, Atonement of Christ. His blood sacrifice is the ransom paid for our deliverance. You know, some people don't believe in deliverance. You know, some ministries don't believe in deliverance. I'm not putting them down. Uh, they believe that once we were saved, then that's all the deliverance that you need. And it is. But it's good that you can always go back to that deliverance. Have you ever just bought something from the store and glory be to God, you got in the car or you was at the cash register and said, you know, I forgot something. I need to go back to aisle nine and get something. So you can always go back to deliverance. Somebody say go back to deliverance. I don't know how many times I went back to aisle nine deliverance. <laughs> I went back to deliverance over and over. Why? Because it's part of the ransom. His blood sacrifice is the ransom paid for our deliverance. 
He took our sinful nature, uh, nature upon himself in order that he might satisfy the demands of the law. The law that was given that if you was caught in some type of act or sin, nine times out of ten, it say stone you to death or cut the hand off or tie the body on your back or whatever the case may be. But thank God that Jesus satisfied, amen, that law. His sacrifice is accepted as the payment for the debt the sinners owe to God. And his debt uh, and his death is accepted as the full payment for the individual's deliverance. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. The Lord's redemptive work for us is threefold. First, it is closely associated with forgiveness. I'm about to say forgiveness. forgiveness. Since we receive forgiveness through the redemption price of Christ's death. Second, it involves justification. Somebody say justification. Since the deliverance established us in a restored position of favor before God. Third, it promised final deliverance from the power of sin at the coming of the Lord. This redemption is the scarlet thread. And if you know anything about the scarlet thread back in the Old Testament, how they tied that scarlet thread around that goat and hope that it wouldn't come back. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The dictionary defined redemption as one, the action of saving or being saved from sin, error or evil. Number two, the action of regaining or gaining possession of something in exchange for payment are clearing a debt. Romans, the fifth chapter, you don't have to turn there, beginning at verse 8, notice what it says. It specifies, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemy, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. I, I, I want to pause right there before I finalize this. People are going through. Everybody go through seasons. And the enemy will try to make things so dark, but I want to encourage you, if you have to write it down on a piece of paper, Put it in your wallet, put it in your pocketbook, pin it inside your pocket or whatever the case may be, your pillowcase. When darkness try to come and try to overtake you, you need to remind yourself that you are redeemed by the blood of the lamb. And sometimes we can't see no further than our hand. Isn't that right? But remind yourself. And when you remind yourself, you're also reminding the attacks of the enemy. I am the redeemed of the Lord. Sometimes you have to encourage your own self. Glory be to God. I am the redeemed of the Lord. Maybe sometimes things seem like it's not going the way that you thought it was going to go. But I'm yet, and I'm, I'm yet the redeemed of the Lord. Nothing can change that. Yeah. The world is getting darker. All kind of things is arising. 
Praise God. There's the culture war that is taking place. More, more emphasis is put on culture than it is the word of God. And, and, and watch this. And the enemy is trying to change the whole landscape of the church or the believers. You see? So this is why we got to stand in, in, in spite of the word of God said, when you have done all you can stand, stand. I am the redeemer of the Lord. Matter of fact, while I'm standing, I'm readjusting my armor. I am the redeemer of the Lord. You have received a bad report. I'm still yet the redeem of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know how many people that I have talked with, uh, has, uh, they, they, they have contemplated or they have entertained the thought even just for a few seconds concerning about committing suicide or just giving up on themselves. Hallelujah. But that's the darkness of the enemy because he's jealous of you. Just touch your neighbor and say, the enemy is jealous of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, he's jealous of you. And you need to know that. And watch this. We are, we are not in competition with the enemy. Don't even get in competition with him. Just know that you are the redeem of the Lord. And if you have a healthy conscience and you keep crying out to the Lord, Lord, strengthen me where I'm weak, build me up where I'm torn down, and get yourself back up and keep saying, you know, that, that old story, that, 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 that old choo-choo train uh, say, uh, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. You guys know the story. Look, you, you may have to just keep saying, I am the redeemer of the Lord. I am the redeemer of the Lord. You might be going up a stiff mountain, but I am the redeemer of the Lord. I am the redeemer of the Lord. You might be going, sometime our journey take us down in the valley, but I'm still the redeemer of the Lord. Why? Because, yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadows of death, I will fear no evil. Because he's with me. Why? Because I am the redeemer of the Lord. Do this make sense up in here? Sometimes we just need simple encouragement. Well, Lord, I missed it yesterday. Yeah, but you know what? I have a lot of chillers that missed it yesterday. But you're still the redeemer of the Lord. Your value is in the redemption power of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah. Something simple but yet profound. The blood of the Lord. Related to Christian concept of redemption is the word ransom. Jesus paid the price for our release from sin and its punishment. Go to Matthew, the 20th chapter. Let's look at verse 28. There it is. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. Even as the Son of Man, but to minister, he did that. That just how much he loved you. You know what? Let's just do this real quick. Won't you just go to somebody real quick and just say, the Lord loves you. Somebody need that. I sense it. Maybe you went, maybe somebody watching or whatever the case, maybe you went through a, a nasty, bad divorce. The Lord loves you. Maybe you missed out on a golden opportunity as far as business or a job, and now you feel like you're defeated. The Lord loves you. Maybe you made a mistake and you, and you don't see no way out of it. The Lord loves you. And what I love about it, the Lord loves us and it don't cost you no money. All it costs is you being reminded. Pull it back in, pull it back in, pull it back in. 
All it calls is you being reminded the Lord loves you. And that should settle it. That song we used to sing, love lifted me when nothing else can help. Love lifted me. May we lift our hand in his presence. Yes. Yes. Sometimes people think preachers or pastors or whatever the case may be don't go through. But let me tell you something. The enemy, he, boy, he, he just like, I mean, he would love to try to occupy the high places of my head. And sometimes he'd be trying to come with some ugly stuff. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, some ugly stuff, but I know, I know that's not the Holy Spirit. I know that's not El Gay. And I have to pull out those strongholds with the help of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on and say amen to that. So if I have to do it, you too. Yeah. We are the redeem of the Lord. Yeah. Man, that was good, wasn't it? Look at 1 Timothy, the second chapter, and verse 6. They're going to pull that up. Let's read it together. Ready to read? Who gave himself... Mm -mm -mm. We are the overcomers by the what? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We used to sing a song years ago. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. I got the rest of the song. But just let the redeem of the Lord say so. Yeah. His death was in exchange for our life. In fact, Scripture is quite clear that redemption is only possible through his blood. That is, by his death. Colossians 1.14. Let's read it together. Ready? Read. In whom we have. Yeah. Why are we tripping? You know, I thought about this thing, man. I thought about this thing. We are in a real war. I know we hear that, but we, need, we really, really need to know that we're in a real war, and this war is real. The enemy is trying to play for keeps. But he can't keep nothing that's already been redeemed. We are the redeem of the Lord. Do you hear me what I'm saying? May we lift our hands in his presence. We're the redeem of the Lord. Now, this is all part about this time together. We talked about the power of redemption. Our God, Father, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He wants relationship. Who don't want relationship? He wants relationship. Somebody might be watching and say, Pastor, well, I don't feel worthy. Shh. Somebody just say, shh. shh. Don't say that. The price already been paid for you. And there's no expiration to it. Hallelujah. You are worthy. You become worthy through by the blood of the lamb. The blood of Jesus Christ. And just remind yourself, if you're watching, just say, I am the redeem of the Lord. That's what make me worthy. Have you ever just felt so guilty that, and that, and that uh, you, you, you didn't feel worthy to pray to him? I've been there many times. But man... That battle be working up in your head. I know, I know, I know. But man, if I can just 
prime that pump. I'll just call somebody. And there has been time I just watch and turn on a Christian television and something, something they said or whatever the case, sparked something and it caused me to break the silence. You know, the enemy trying to silence us. But break the silence and begin to say, thank you, Jesus. Irregardless, I'm still worthy because of the blood of the Lamb. Not by my own merit, but because the price has been paid. Ah! Oh, yeah. ah, yes. Price been paid. You see, Pastor, these are messages that we got to bring now. Got to bring these messages. Yeah. The price been paid. Your account has been paid in full. All you have to do is be reminded that it is paid. We are the recipients and the beneficiaries to everything that Christ has suffered, bled, and died for. Amen. That's our inheritance. And we are the redeemer of the Lord. Pastor, you understand, I have some habits that I can't kick. You still yet redeem of the Lord. No, I'm not giving out licenses, but what I'm still saying is this. The redemption power of God, I believe, is going to outweigh whatever we're dealing with. The old folk used to tell us, we used to, we, I love this. Oh, they see us over there playing church and say, yeah, you, just keep on playing. You're going to get it after a while. You're going to get the Holy Ghost after a while. Just keep on reminding, you, reminding yourself that you are, the, you are the redeemer of the Lord and the price been paid. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to minister to us. <laughs> Pastors, everybody in here, we must look for a need. It's all about gathering. It's all about redemption, the ministry of reconciliation. We should look for a need. We should, it should be stirred up in our heart to look for a need. And I believe, you know, the old folks used to say, uh, how they say that thing? Uh, you, you, you won't find it until you need it or something like that. Am I saying the halfway right? But when you don't need it, you, you, don't, you have, but when you're in a need, you start searching, then eventually you will find it. I want to encourage you to allow the Holy Spirit to stir up the need, and the need is this. It's to be on the lookout for those who are going through, and they seem like they're lost, and they can't find their way. Look out for those. Here we go now. They have been drained from their strength. Seems like life is being pulled out of them. Amen. Be on the lookout for those uh, who are in toxic relationships, those who have been overtaken by anxiety or thoughts of suicide, or they're dealing with a habit that seems like they can't break. That's your opportunity to minister the power of redemption, the ministry of reconciliation, to let them know that their Christ have paid the price for their freedom. And all they have to do is accept him. Hallelujah. And then something miraculously began to take place from the inside out. Begin to circumcise that old hard heart that the enemy have tried to become stony. And the hand of God begin to move upon their heart to bring about change. Yeah. And let them know. You don't need to compare yourself with nobody. But compare yourself to the promise. And he'll see you through. Yes. In my conclusion. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes 
we are healed. I'm sensing right now by Holy Spirit, someone has been having some type of activity going on inside your chest. If that's you, I want you to lift your hands in Christ Jesus' name. You, you my dear sisters, I sent somebody else. Amen. I'm telling you, there's two right there. Praise the Lord. Uh, come on, let's lift our hands in his presence. This is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing, church. Yes, and what we're going to do, we're going to exercise body ministry before we start taking communion. I want some of you to gather around this door over here and, and gather around this pastor, and let's just pray. Come on. It's not my responsibility, but it's my responsibility, amen, to let us know that it's body ministry time. Come on, come on, let's do it quickly. Hallelujah. And speak to that devil. And remind that devil they ha that they have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Come on, come on, sisters. Come on, come on, yes, come on. Come on, get involved. Get, get involved. Get involved. Yes. This body ministry. Yes. Come on, come on, come on, Didi. I mean, Sister Didi. Come on. Come on. Come, come on. Come, come, my sister. Yes. Yes. God has no respect to person. Oh, yes. Amen. Basanda. Hallelujah. And the love of the Lord shed abroad. That we are his beneficiaries and his recipients to everything that Christ has suffered, bled, died, and risen for. We are the redeemed of the Lord. And the power of redemption as Christ has given his life as a ransom in order that we might be set free from the works of the enemy. Be set free from the misery that might be going on inside their chest cavity right now. Be set free that when the light is turned on, darkness has to flee. When the light is turned on, sickness has to flee in Christ Jesus' name. I sense it falling. It's falling. It's falling. It's falling. It's falling. It's falling, it's falling, it's falling. It's not by power nor by might, but by his spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, could we take a moment and just give the Lord some praise for moving by his spirit? Hallelujah. I see something that appeared to be so simple, but yet, if it concerns you, it concerns the Lord. I see this toe. I can't tell you that it's on the right foot or the left foot, but somebody is having an issue with a toe. If that's you, I want you to just lift your hand right now in Jesus' name. Doesn't matter how great it is or how small it is. Amen. We have three. We have three. 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 Lift your hands again so that they can see you. Amen. Go to them right now and just, and just pray with them. Agree with them. Yes. Place your hand on them. Let's believe the Lord. Come on. We're binding our faith with their faith because we have an inheritance. This is the love and the relationship of our Lord ministering to his people, those that are watching right now. You ought to tag somebody so they can witness this. The Lord is moving by his spirit. Okay, yes. Oh, good, excellent. You, you just hold on. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Glory to Dios, Señor.
We speak to that toe now and command you to line up the source and origin that is connected to it. Loose your hold and truth come forth that they be may ever withhold in Christ Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord Jesus Christ another praise offering. I hear you, Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is bringing before the courts, it's bringing before heaven's courts, anger. Anger is on the stand right now. If there's anybody that's been challenged with anger issues, not saying that you're angry, but you've been challenged with it. Come on and lift your hands so we can pray. All right, one, two, three. Come down, sir. Come, yeah, come down so they can pray. Look around and, and, and let's go and pray with them. Amen? Hallelujah. Lift your hands so they can see you. Some more over there. Yes. Brother, right there. Come, come on, sister. Help pray. Help, help pray. Yes. Help pray. In Christ Jesus' name, anger issues has been brought before witnesses. We appropriate and plead the blood of Jesus. You are not their inheritance. There's no life in you. They don't want you. Matter of fact, they cut their cords from you now. And every lien that you try to place on them, we remind you that Christ has redeemed them by his precious blood that caused them to be set free. Now in Christ Jesus' name, we break the power and effect of anger issues. Loose your hold now in Christ Jesus' name. We pull you up from the root out of the depths of their soul. You like to be entertained by darkness, and now we release the light of God's word that they are the redeemed of the Lord. They are the redeemed of the Lord. They are the redeemed of the Lord. And the price has been paid in full. So pack your bags and go. And the word of God said that whom he has freed, they are free indeed. And they're being reinstated of what the Lord says about it in Christ Jesus' name. Let's give the Lord Jesus Christ a praise offering. <laughs> Let me tell you what I saw. Man, isn't this good? I saw, I saw that anger almost like, almost like a... Um, Almost like a, uh, a vapor that's doing like this. It was just coming out. Just coming out. Yes. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands in his presence one more time. I know this different. Be, be open for different. <laughs> we want the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the redeemer of the Lord say so. So. The need is. But be on the lookout because people are wanting to be set free. And there's a, there's a survey in my closing that, that was released again, I want to say maybe about two or three months ago. And it was saying that high 90% of the people 
really want somebody to carry a conversation with them so that they can be set free. You can't look at what they have on. You can't look at how they look. That's a soul that has a price been paid for for their redemption. And they won't get it unless somebody speak the word. We hold the keys. And he said, I give unto you keys to the kingdom of heaven. And one of the keys is the good news and the glad tidings of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Use those keys. Look at somebody and say, use those keys. Yeah, while you're jiggling and jerking and falling out, use those keys to help set somebody free. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Use those keys.